Let's have an example. If the interest rate is 8% per year, what a decision would you make based on the decision tree diagram below? This is the decision tree and it starts at year zero. At the beginning of the project, we have two choices. First is to introduce a new product which will cost the company one million dollars at the end of year two. The other choice is to do nothing and gain a zero profit per year for eight years. Now going back to the introduction of new product, it will give us two chances and point six or sixty percent of it will give us two hundred thousand dollars of profit per year for six years starting at end of year three the other part forty percent will give us two hundred eighty thousand dollars of profit per year for six years starting at end of year three to, to solve this problem and have a decision, we will be summing all of the possible outcomes, or we will be summing the net present worth of all the possible outcomes. And there are actually three possible outcomes. First one is we will get $200,000 profit per year. We have the second option, uh, the second outcome is two hundred eighty thousand dollar per year of profit, and a zero profit for eight years. So let's start the solution by computing the present worth of each category. We have eight years as the analysis period, and the rate is eight percent. Let's start with expressing the initial investment of one million as a present worth at year zero. We will also be projecting the annual profit for the new product at the end of year two and then after that we will express it at the year zero. The equation for that is first we have the negative one million. P given F for 8% for 2 years because 1 million here is at the end of year 2. So this is the process or this is the term enable for us to express this at year 0. The next one is by adding the two probabilistic event. One is 0.6 and the other is 0.4. Take note that the sum of the probabilistic events should be equal to 1. We will have 200,000 at 6 per at 60 percent and 280,000 at 40 percent. Both are annuity for 6 years and at 8 percent. So with this part here, this will only give us a single cash flow at the end of year two. We have to express it at year zero and that is why we multiplied another factor and that is P given F for 8% and two years. Again, the 1 million is the initial investment projected at year zero. This 200,000 is the 60% chance of happening. The $280,000 is another chance that we will be getting a profit of, and that is and that is at 40%. The product of P given A is projecting the annuity values as a present worth at the end of year two. And lastly, the, fact, the last factor will express the value of the profit at year zero. Then the result 
of the summation of present worth is 62,165. That means we, uh, no matter what's the what will happen to the amount of profit that we will be getting, we will still have a positive net present worth. And that is, again, worth 62,165. Let's compare that to the other option, and that is to do nothing and gain a profit of zero dollars per year for eight years. Now, if you are to decide which option to choose at the, at the start of year zero, is that to do nothing or to introduce a new product, and based on the present words of the two, it is very obvious that we have to introduce a new product and gain a net present worth of $62,165. For the second example, the tree diagram describes the uncertain cash flows for an, for an engineering project. The analysis period is just two years. The MARR is 15%. What is the present worth of the project? And B, what is the probability of the present worth will be greater than or equal to zero? As you can see in the diagram, there are a total of nine possible outcomes in the decision. At year zero, we are given three chances and that is worth 20 percent 60 percent and the other is 20 percent at year one for the first chance it is further divided into three chances and same goes with the other outcomes at the end of year one you know in order for us to solve this it will be easier if we will use a table. There are a total of nine possible outcomes. Let's let's type or let's put the net cash flows at the end of each period. So for possible outcome one, which is this 17,500, it will need to have a negative $29,000 at the start of year one or at year zero and same goes to all of the possible outcomes right there so all are getting negative 29,000 at year zero at year one we have 6,000 for the first three 12,000 for the next three and for the last three outcomes it will get positive 19,000. Now, for at the end of year two, these are the net cash flows. Right here, so from 17,500 down to 31,000 at the end of the nine possible outcome. Let's compute or let's solve the present worth of each possible outcome. And let's start with the 17,500. We can get the present worth by expressing the 17,500 at year zero. So this is just a compound interest formula. And take note that the rate that we'll be using is 15%. So this is P given F for 15% at term 1. This is still negative 29,000 and this is positive 17,500 multiplied by P given F for 15% for 2 years. And these are the present words of each possible outcomes. The next step in solving the net present worth of the project 
is to consider their probabilities, each of the probabilities of each possible outcomes. So these are the present words that we have computed earlier. So what are the probability that we will be multiplying each present worth? Let's start with the first one, the first possible outcome. Its probability is 0.1, and we have to multiply that with the probability of this. Because enable for us to reach this, we have to go through this branch and also this branch. So we have to multiply both probability. And we'll do the same for all the possible outcomes. So for the second one, we have 0.2 times 0.2 and so on until we reach the last possible outcome, which is 0.3 times 0.2. Now to get the present worth of each outcome, we'll just have to multiply the present worth with the probability. Multiplying the negative 10,550.1 with the product of 0.1 and 0.2, we will get negative 211. This is the formula. Doing the same thing for all the possible outcomes, and these are all the results. Remember that the probabilities of all the possible outcomes should be equal to 1. And if we add all of this right here, it will be equal to 1. And rightfully so. Now for letter A, we are looking for the net present worth of the project. And we can do that by summing all of these. And our answer is 175.06. That is the net present worth of the project. So this is the answer for letter A. For letter B, what is the probability of that present worth is greater than or equal to zero? Let us, uh, let's look at the present worth times the probability right here. So which... Which possible outcome has a positive present worth? And these are all the positive present worth. That means we will be adding all of their probabilities. We have to add 0.1 times 0.6 plus 0.3 times 0.6 and so on. So that will be the equation if we want to to calculate the probability that the present worth will be greater than or equal to zero. And the result of that is 0.68. That means there is a 68% chance that the present worth will be greater than or equal to zero. With this knowledge in mind, we can say that we have a greater chance of gaining a profit than losing one because that is more than 50%. So it is more likely or it is better to invest in this particular engineering project because we have a 68% chance of gaining profit.